Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Campbell Sports. I'm your host, Chris Hamer, and we have a great show lined up for you this week. We'll talk men's and women's basketball, wrestling, track and field, and believe it or not, the weather feels a little bit like it, and you know it's time for the spring sports to start heating up, and this weekend the softball season starts as uh, the Camel softball team will be on the road in Georgia for their first tournament of the year. And to talk about this season and a lot of exciting stuff going on with softball is head coach Drew Peterson in his 12th season here uh, at Campbell University. And first of all, coach, we have to talk about probably the most exciting thing going into this season, construction uh, starting uh, on the softball stadium. You know, Chris, we're just thrilled. It's something that we've been dreaming about really for about eight or nine years and putting feelers out there, trying to develop friendships in the community finding individuals that are passionate about fast pitch softball and women's sports and you know thank the Lord we found those individuals it's come together we've raised our money and now the ground is being broken. Um, maybe describe to people that, that haven't seen the plans or, or, or don't know what you're planning because right now they're in the very early stages and, and kind of laying the, the concrete slab but, but, but when it's all done uh, what will we see out there? Well Chris the primary focus is a seating fan area you know we wanted it to be first class uh, something in line with some of the larger facilities that we have seen in the in the in the recent past and so we're going to have seating uh, approximately 370 seats uh, handicap seating this the two wing areas will be bench back seating the center section will be individual seats uh, we'll have a press box above the center section with a radio booth and uh, we're going to come in and, and come in behind it with a brick facade to sort of capsulize the entire project, make it very professional, fit in with our university's brick layout, and it'll look first class. And construction going on now, but um, when you have softball games coming up in the next a couple of months, people will still be able to come in and see you guys. And when, if everything works right, should, should everything be um, at least... Uh, to a point where people can start sitting in there and enjoying it. Well, at this point we have our uh, concrete base in place and so we will set our previously used bleachers on top of that pad. Right now in a, in a different site, our, our new bleachers are being built. Uh, they'll come in on a trailer, they'll, they'll lower them in and reconnect them and it will be really a seamless transition. We won't have a time where we don't have seating. Once we get those bleachers in place, uh, the press box will begin construction and then the wall shortly after that. So I don't think our fans will necessarily see any uh, awkward situations for them, but it'll, all of a sudden one day we'll have old bleachers and the next we'll have new and it'll be a, a rocking opportunity for us to get excited about softball. Until that time, of course, um, you have a lot of tournaments, and, and over the first month and a half, you're on the road a lot. Anyway, let's talk about the season and uh, this year's edition of uh, Camel Softball. You returned four starters and, uh, gosh, a couple of uh, really good players for you and Taylor McGee and Sarah Forgas. They've been outstanding for several years now. Uh, Sarah Forgas has been all-conference each season. She's been in college softball. Uh, Taylor McGee is right now number two on our career home run list, hoping that she'll get into that one slot some point uh, mid to late season. Um, tremendous leaders for us, great work ethic is, is always the case when you have people that get these kind of accolades. And we're proud to have them you know, back for another year and leading our team and setting the example every day. Coach, of the, of the many exciting things going on, uh, your pitching returning very strong um, and, uh, gosh, uh, really nice to have that kind of settled as you go into the year. Absolutely. We've got great depth, and it's certainly uh, led by Christina Melton. She's going to be a four-year starter for us, uh, extremely hard worker, one of those ladies that comes out every day, not only does her work, but, but really encourages her teammates to keep up and you know if they don't she'll let them know and but at the same time she's one of those encouragers as well they're having an off day she'll come in and say you know what I've been through it I know where you're at uh, follow my lead we'll get through this together each pitcher on our staff has a sort of different makeup about them so they'll complement each other but Christina definitely sets the pace for us you have a lot of newcomers as well, and I know you're excited about uh, some of the uh, of the ladies that you have on their team. Is, is there a couple names, maybe people that the, the fans will realize they're going to contribute uh, right off the bat as freshmen? Sure. Um, as shortstop, we have Erica Nesbitt, a very heavily recruited young lady in the in North Carolina, and 
And for the large part, our freshman class are North Carolina student athletes. Um, of course, we have a center fielder named Stephanie Jones, who's from the western part of the state that will start and uh, be a significant part of the middle of our order. Uh, Brittany Bruce will play the third base sack for us and really handle that hot corner, give us some speed there that we haven't had in recent past. Uh, we have an outstanding freshman pitcher, Julia Calicut, who's from uh, Randolph County. And so, uh, you know, with those individuals, you're going to have more team speed, um, excellent defense, uh, great range, high character girls. Uh, but when they get out and play the game, they just bring a lot of energy. And I think it's going to be a, a sense of tempo that maybe hasn't been seen here in the recent past. I know, Coach, you and your team have been a champing on the bit to get out there, especially with this great weather. You hit the road this weekend coming up. Uh, you guys will go to Georgia. And then what's exciting is, uh, gosh, in two weekends, February 17th and 18th, here at home for the Hampton Inn Invitational Tournament. Uh, that should be a, a great couple of weekends to kick off the season. You know, we're jumping right into the uh, fire, so to speak, Chris. We, we really want to... Uh, be a team that's in the regional, in the NCAA hunt, uh, being considered for at-large bids if we don't win the Big South tournament. And so we feel like in order to do that, we've got to go out and play those people. We've got to play the teams that are going to be in the regional rankings. And so we went out and got ourselves again in the Georgia tournament. We'll see NC State there. We've got St. John's, of course, the University of Georgia, who's been a multi-time World Series team. And we'll know right from day one where we stand. But I also want to set the a precedent for our players and our future recruits that this is the schedule we want to play, this is the level of softball we think we can compete at, and we've been doing that now for three or four years, and uh, we just want to continue to build, uh, sort of a, in along the lines of the model that we see in Gonzaga and, and Butler in men's basketball. You know, we may not be the largest school in terms of enrollment, but we can play big softball. And you have proven that uh, in, in the recent history, of course, uh, going to the NCAA tournament two times in the last four years. Well, looking forward to it, you can get a full softball schedule, over 20 home dates, including uh, the Hampton Inn Invitational coming up in two weekends on GoCamels.com. As softball season starts up, basketball season starting to wind down. We'll tell you now about both the men's and women's team for Campbell basketball and how they did over the past week. Vote for Eric Griffin. This dunk is up for ESPN's Dunk of the Year, and Griffin himself is up for the Dark Horse Dunker of the Year, a contest which could land him in the college dunk contest at the Final Four. Look for the voting page at GoCamels.com. Voting for the first leg ends on Sunday the 12th. Last week, Griffin and company took over third place in the Big South Conference with a 62-57 home win against Charleston Southern. Trey Freeman had 22 points, shooting 10 for 10 from the free throw line, including 4 of 4 in the final 17 seconds. Lauren Murthy was a defensive hero with this steal as Charleston Southern tried to tie the game late. Freeman continued his hot play against Presbyterian, throwing in 18 points. The great week for Freeman resulted in his third Big South Freshman of the Week award. Griffin threw in 17 as well, but Presbyterian left the creek with a two-point win, just the second time Campbell had been beaten at home this season, a home court that leads the Big South in attendance. Radford visiting Campbell on a Monday night. Play 4K. It's an initiative to raise breast cancer awareness through basketball. The Gay Yow Cancer Fund, the official charity of the event tonight. And, of course, Yow, the legendary NC State coach, lost her battle with cancer. Rosalind Presley, tough shot here. Look at her bank it in. And that'll tie things up at 26 in the first half. Presley keeping the bank open, extending her range as it kisses off the glass for two. And then before the halftime break, Amanda O'Neill to Kiera Gaines for two. 35 to 34 the score. Campbell leads at the half. Head coach Wanda Watkins looking great in pink as well. And She'll enjoy this. Nice pass, Caitlin Bass to Jasmine Cooper. Cooper, 14 points on the night. Tied Tanisha Baker for the team high. Kate Cloxton looks trapped, gets a great pass down to Cooper. Cooper puts in two more. And Campbell has a two-point lead with four to go. It'll go back and forth down the stretch. Big South freshman of the week, Trey Freeman. His buddy Trey Brimmer looking nervous. And they should be. 15 seconds to go. Rad for up two. Make it five. A three-pointer from Dinar Irwin Spencer. Three of her game-high 24 points. 64 to 59. Radford gets by Campbell. Welcome back to Inside Campbell Sports. Uh, joining me now, head wrestling coach for Campbell University, Joe Boardwind. And 
Gosh, Joe, as your season winds down, you can really look back and, and see all the accomplishments. Right now, you are 3-2 and two, uh, in conference. Also, more dual wins than any other Campbell team in almost 15 years. Mm -hmm. It has been quite a season for you guys so far. Yeah, it's been um, a great turnaround for our program. You know, we've been excited for the last year or so. We've been telling people we're coming, we're going to be better, we've got the right people involved, and I think we're now showing that that wasn't just talk. We're backing it up on the mat with wins. I think what's so exciting, too, is uh, when you watch uh, your matches this year, you see a lot of true freshmen out there, number mm -hmm. one, a, a lot of underclassmen, and, and you see these guys, they have the strength, they have the talent. The times when they don't get it done, it's it's just experience, which you know will come with, with more wrestling. Yeah, that's right. I, in our sport, I mean, to start 80% of your starting lineup as true freshmen is almost absurd. I mean, you don't really see that nationally. So, you know, when we lose, we're struggling with that exact issue with experience and um, just time on the mat. So what, what we want to make sure that we do, though, even though these guys are young, is we keep telling them, you can win now. You can win now. You can correct this now. Because we don't want that to become an excuse where people say, hey, I'm young. It's okay for yeah. you to lose. You have a couple of really uh, big home events coming up, including this weekend. On Saturday, February 11th, uh, top 15 ranked team Northwestern uh, comes into town. And then you have the North Carolina Tar Heels here at 8 o'clock this Saturday. Uh, talk about some two uh, very good teams coming to your place. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's the first time Northwestern's been here to Bowie's Creek. And uh, the head coach there, Drew Periano, was a training partner of mine. And they have a great team, so they're coming down to um, help us attract, I think, interest to our program. Um, we want to get a chance to, I don't know what we can do with them team-wise, but individually I want to see some of our guys match up with their top guys and see where we stand. So that's a great situation for us. And then Carolina, we were able to bring down here in part because they love the idea of wrestling Northwestern. And uh, I'm not sure if Carolina has been here before. I think they may have in the past, but it's been quite some time. And so we're really looking forward to that matchup. We want to try to make that become a great rivalry between us and the Tar Heels. And then your final uh, home match of the year, February 17th against the Citadel. It's big because it's a, it, it's a conference match, and it's also a senior night. But we talk about the youth. Uh, it's the good and the bad thing. you you got one senior you're going right. to honor uh, during that, which is very good uh, for the future, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Citadel has a great team. They're, you know, they're neck and neck with Appalachian State. They had them beat, actually, in the dual meet, wound up losing, and uh, App just beat Chattanooga for the regular season title. So Citadel is right there with those other three teams. So it's going to be a great dual meet. Um, they're older than us. They've got experience, but we definitely have a shot, and it won't take long to honor our senior, <laughs> and uh, it'll be right, right back at it back to action so it won't, won't take long at all should be a great match though that's coming up senior night against the citadel on february 17th and of course this saturday exciting as uh february 11th ranked northwestern comes into town that's 6 15 and then uh campbell versus the heels at eight o'clock we'll be back with more after these messages catch live streaming of campbell university athletic events on the internet log on to gocamels.com click on the big south network and choose the event you'd like to see and go camels welcome back to inside campbell sports and it's uh, my pleasure to in introduce everybody to uh, one of the uh, newest of faces and names on the head coaching staff here at Campbell University. Norbert Elliott is the track and field coach here at Campbell and uh, coach uh, not only welcome uh, since you have been here since the fall but uh, but I, I love your story and it takes you all across the nation from the Bahamas uh, your native land to UTEP uh, to the Olympics. Maybe be first before we get into all the coaching stuff, uh, kind of tell us about uh, your trek that ended you up in the Olympics. Well, I tell you what, um, very, very interestingly, when I was a kid, my mom used to tell me that uh, I wouldn't leave the yard, but I would always say, as a kid, I've got to go, I've got to go, I've got to go. <laughs> Lo and behold, never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined that I would have had the opportunity to uh, have traveled the world, literally. Uh, pretty much uh, every continent, and uh, so I'm truly blessed. But no, I came, I le left the Bahamas as an athlete, uh, being recruited by uh, Texas El Paso, uh, competed there for them, was rather successful, and uh, my first degree was in business management, and I just thought that I would go back home and get involved in business and maybe even the political process, but the love of track and field just sort of grabbed me, and. Uh, Started working on a master's degree in track, in um, exercise science, education, and uh, just uh, found out that my true love was was track. And uh, so, I was assistant coach there at uh, Texas El Paso for three years, and 
was uh, fortunate enough to get the job in uh, Athens, Georgia, at University of Georgia. Uh, coached there for about 10 years. And then from there I went on to Murray, Kentucky. Uh, coached there for three years and then from Murray to uh, with the Tennessee Vols uh, and just left there this past uh, fall. And so, you know, my journey continues and now here I am at uh, Campbell University. I think a lot of people out there are saying, oh, you know, the Bahamas, it's, it's what you see on TV. Maybe a couple people have, have stopped there on cruises or in their honeymoon. Is it really that awesome and beautiful if you if you live there or if you grow up there or the things that you see on TV? Is it like that? <laughs> I tell you, um, you know, when I first went to Texas, uh, I tell kids uh, or friends that I was from the Bahamas and all of a sudden you see this huge, you know, almost deer in the headlights kind of syndrome. <laughs> What are you doing here? I never knew that the Bahamas was that pretty, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I didn't live the tourist life, you know? That's right. And, and yeah. so what they saw on TV, and, and when, when tourists go to the Bahamas, of course, they, they stay on the beach and they stay in air-conditioned hotels. Yeah. Of course, if you're a native, 90% uh, of them don't really have air-conditioned houses, and, and they're not, you know, they don't stay on the beaches. But, you know, uh, as, I'm, as I've grown now and become a little bit older, I realize that truly it is a beautiful place, and um, I miss it. I try to take my kids back there about once a year around the Christmas time and uh, uh, I try to let them experience some of the things that the tourists see, some of the things that I didn't get to see uh, while growing up there. We are talking to uh, head track and field coach Norbert Elliott and, and, and coach you are uh, already kind of into this track season and again uh, uh, you, you were hired a little later in the fall so, so you're still getting your feet wet but, but what have you seen from this team? What do you know about Campbell track and field so far? Well uh, first I want to thank uh, Coach Jim Patchell who really put together a, a good solid foundation for me to build on and to take uh, to the next level. Um, so far, uh, I, I want to thank the kids. I want to thank Bob Roller, Kim Graham, and uh, Dr. Bazemore, and the entire uh, athletic staff here for welcoming me. It's been a warm welcome, not only from the administrative standpoint, but also uh, the athletes. It's, it's obviously been a difficult situation for some of them, especially some of the freshmen. Uh, you know, high hopes coming into Campbell, being coached by coach, another coach, and all of a sudden he's gone. And so you've got a brand new coach that didn't really recruit you. But, um, you know, they've been very receptive. And uh, we've had three meets so far. And uh, I can tell you that uh, we're on the right track. You know, uh, I would say we've, about every single meet, uh, we've had five or six personal bests. And uh, we've got a couple of kids that are ranked pretty high right now in the uh, Big South. So uh, we've got a lot of work to do. But um, uh, it's a work in progress, obviously. Like you said, uh, new, brand new here. But um, I'm really thrilled. I'm excited about uh, what Campbell has uh, going forward. A couple of exciting things, not only having uh, you coaching here, your success, and a, and a former Olympian here, but um, a new track facility. A and, a and it's something that I know is still uh, in the process. You would love to put together some, some home meets here, but you finally have a track kind of, kind of worthy of what Campbell's trying to do. No question about it. And, uh, you know, you've got to have the infrastructure in place in order to be able to do the proper recruiting. And uh, we've got a state-of-the-art, world-class facility. Uh, on my interview here, I was truly impressed at, at what we had. And so, believe it or not, right now, we're still trying to put together our first uh, Irwin Belk uh, Invitational, uh, which is going to be the third week in April. And uh, we, we're still uh, working toward that, and I think, uh, I think I can still pull it off. All right, and you can uh, keep up uh, on the schedule and all the stories and, uh, and look in on what Coach and uh, these student athletes are doing on GoCamels.com in the track and field section. That'll do it for us here on Inside Campbell Sports. I'm Chris Amire saying so long, and we'll see you next week right here on Inside Campbell Sports.